Nikki Morgan, you're hitting the city at the heart, right, for, for calling for changes to bonuses to encourage women in finance. Do you really think this is the main issue? Is it, is it a culture or is it really that people feel like, you know, women feel like they're held at back because of the bonuses? I think it's a, it's a cultural issue. There's <clears> undoubtedly a, a reason why. And I used to work in the city. I'm a, an ex-solicitor. I worked at a couple of big city law firms. And I think there is a, a culture in the city that puts uh, not women off often going into firms, but as they go through and progress in their careers. I think bonuses are one manifestation of that. And one of the evidence uh, sessions that we had, very uh, clear guidance from people giving uh, our witnesses, was that they felt that women don't like to have to, to fight, to ask for money. They feel right. they work very hard, they're entitled to be recognised, and actually they don't want to to fight for it and we had fantastic evidence from Amanda Blanc who is the uh, chief executive of AXA who said they they have a very formulaic approach to it so people know if they uh, hit certain criteria or targets that's what they're going to get rewarded. Uh, how can finance close its gender pay gap and do firms really want to challenge this alpha male culture? Well, of course, that's going to be very interesting in terms of seeing the reaction to the report today. Um, but you're absolutely right to talk about the, the gender pay gap. So in uh, banks and building societies, the average gender pay gap now is 35%. When you get to bonuses, it's 52%. Uh, and uh, the gender pay gap is caused by not having enough women. <laughs> In senior positions so you go back to well why are women uh, often going into banks f law firms accounting practices and everything else at, at graduate level where do they go why they're not represented at the highest levels and that's where the culture comes in you also mentioned in the report that you intend to keep challenging the Treasury over BOE appointments yeah. is, is it time that we have a female governor at the BOE? <laughs> well I don't think it's the Treasury Select Committee to tell uh, people who but look I am absolutely up for um, women being represented at the highest levels both in government Government, uh, and also in all our institutions. I think there are some fantastic women out there. And one of the things that we ha have done is made it very clear to the Treasury we, we want to see uh, the number of people, the gender break uh, breakdown of people who yep. apply for jobs and those who are shortlisted. Uh, and that's something that we will want to see again in relation, I think, to the Bank of England Governor. Appointment. Minister, within this and within your studies at Oxford, is the reality on Wall Street, whether it's New York, London, Dubai, wherever, of mathematics? One of the interesting things of this bonus analysis is the adjustments for mathematics. For example, if somebody comes out of Oxford Mathematical Finance and goes into Wall Street and they got to pay him 200,000 pounds base and $3 million to keep them, is that male or female in your study and is your study adjusted for that academic rigor? Well, you're right to ask, and I think that's one of the factors that, that may very well be uh, that firms take into uh, account. But of course, there comes a point where actually it's not just about background, it should be about what people, men and women, are achieving in the job that they have been asked to do. And undoubtedly, it is the case, the fact that there is a gender pay gap in bonuses of 52%, that when a man is being paid a bonus of, let's say, £100,000, the woman is getting uh, potentially £48,000. Now, that's not right in 2018, but you're absolutely right to say, uh, obviously, the next step is for firms to unpick why that is why that's happening. Part why is it happening? What is happening? Call out these practices. Is it is it within equal sectors or is are the studies conflating the academic rigor across a given firm? Well, I think the firms are disclosing on the basis of the whole firm. And you're right exactly. to say, I mean, actually, one of the things may well be that actually firms want to break down more in their future gender pay gap reports exactly uh, where women are and, and men and women. When will uh, how we see that? Pay, I think this is absolutely critical. Uh, Chair, when will we see that? Well, we, this is the first year that we've had a gender pay gap reporting requirements on companies and organisations with over 250 employees. And I think you're right, Sig, because one of the things that uh, we say in the <clears> report <throat> is that the re narrative reporting that goes around this, not just about the numbers, it should be about the narrative reporting. And I think that in the course of the next couple of years, we will see companies really begin to break down their information. Look, sunlight is the best form of disinfectant, and that transparency, those requirements of transparency, is really changing behaviours. Boards are reporting to me they are discussing these issues more than they've ever discussed them before and then the next thing is going to be breaking down and really understanding what's driving those differences. Uh, James, can, can shareholders play a very valuable role here? I don't know, when you speak uh, shareholders, to managers, shareholders have a critically important role. Do you role ask is, about diversity? Uh, most definitely. And then decide to invest in the company whether they have enough diversity or not? Well, and if they don't have adequate diversity, we regard that as a governance risk. And I would say that there are some quite interesting changing values, not only in terms of excessive corporate remuneration, <laughs> which is one of the challenges yep. associated with bonuses, but also how many companies are committed and paying the living wage to mm. the bottom end of the deal. Yes. And I 
I would say that in terms of gender diversity and the, and the pay gap, there is also a disproportionately large number of women who are stuck in the lowest grade jobs, and that's another challenge that the city has to address. I think that's, that's absolutely right, and I think one of the things that gender pay gap reporting requires is to break down organisations into quartiles and look at the gender representation, which I think has come as a surprise. People have looked focused at the top end, but actually you're absolutely right, say many financial services firms find they've got many women, talented women, but they're at towards the bottom of the organisation, and why is that? Shareholders is a great point, as is investors, and I think more and more investors these days, uh, you know, not just because they, they own uh, shares in the business, but they're looking where to put their, their money, which kind of companies to invest in, they are asking questions about diversity. Oh, and there are lots of studies that absolutely demonstrate that better quality governance, better diversity leads to better long-term returns. That's exactly right. Uh, how long does it take to, to change? So are we going to see meaningful changes in the next three years? Is it five years? Or is it, is it even longer? Well, I hope it's not even longer. Mm -hmm. I think we are seeing meaningful changes already. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm hearing from CEOs that actually this is on their uh, board agendas in a way that it never has been uh, before. But obviously it takes a while to build a pipeline uh, of talent. So actually uh, we've got to make sure that we are building sustainable. So we, we again, encouraging the women to move from perhaps being at the bottom of organisations to keeping in the organisation <coughs> uh, to moving through to the top. So you know, it's going to take some time. I remember actually speaking with Christine Lagarde. Tom, do you remember that interview? It was a couple of years ago, and we were talking about you know uh, women and and women in financial services. And she says, you know, she goes to prime ministers and she goes to heads of state, and they say, well, we'd love to promote more women, but I just don't know who. And she'd show up yes. with a list and yep. say, oh, here's a list of women you need to promote. Do we need to do more of that? Absolutely, uh, and I think that's one thing. So one of the sessions we had before the committee was uh, we had some headhunters and recruitment agencies in, and we asked them exactly how is it working in terms of uh, the when they're asked to fill a job, uh, the list that they are coming up with. Um, and I think the, the talent, the, the really good ones, are actually saying, here's a list of people you haven't thought of, you know, we think you should be looking at them. One of the things we identify in the report is it's too easy to recruit in the same image. So, you know, you don't take risks, you think, well, I've had this person and I want to recruit somebody just like them, because I know that's going to be easier or quicker for my business, they're going to they're gonna slot in. So you're right, one of the things we hear, for example, in the committee is, oh, there aren't enough female economists to be able to point to senior uh, jobs requiring uh, an economic background. I'm afraid I don't believe that. But look, it's incumbent on all of us to go and spot, talent spot, uh, great people uh, and to recommend them for, for, for opportunities. Have they broken out yet trading and have they broken out yet the quantitative structures, including economists? Have they subdivided out those areas and weighted them cross-sectional against the academic pool that's out there? No, I don't think they have done that. I, mean, I, I think there has been some research from an organisation called New Financial, which has broken some of it down. But no, I think that, that breaking down of the evidence... I mean, again, one of the things about transparency, hopefully, is we'll have a lot more information out there So, to, for the research that you're talking about, but also for uh, graduates and others looking to work in certain companies. Uh, they will start looking at all the information that's been disclosed on, on gender pay and, and diversity. And that, I think, will affect you know, where good people want to go and work.